Welcome to chapter 5 of tutorial 7. Let's continue with the case decisions in the previous chapter. We were on to the section for the case discussion. So this is the uh, points that you've noted. Uh, and as I said in the previous tutorial, the decision, if we're making a decision, we need to write out decision and uh, typically do this in bold and underline um, before we continue on the, the rest of our decision. I used to have this pre-printed, but then made the template a bit um, unwieldy to use for general letters of correspondence between the um, the applicant and the heritage offices, for instance. So I'm just going to enter some rubbish here. Um, this is the WYSIWYG module. Then you can see the bold and colors and so on. Are all the icons available? Um, we can view this in full screen. Toggle that to full screen view and you might for instance want to use bullets so let's do that um, that's the numbered one or the bullet list um, and uh, currently the theme I've, I've adjusted the theme so there's a little bug it doesn't actually show you the the bullets in this view but when you preview the decision you'll see it appear so let's do that at the bottom you'll see preview and let's have a look you can see the bullets there so if you want to use the numbered list or the bullet list those options are available um, or you can just manually enter the numbers but the um, the bullets work very very well um, and then the decision section let's look at that um, if we used another series of lines okay well, let's take off bold all the way here Okay, now it's worth spending a little bit of time on this section here and explaining what's happening here. Okay, the behind the scenes, when you're entering text onto the web-based system, it's actually generating um, HTML code. So sometimes the system will do something that looks a little unusual or will add double spaces, and it's because there's an additional line break um, some formatting tag um, that you've accidentally entered um, without realizing it. So it's quite useful to know that you have the option of clicking on HTML and having a look at the the code that's generated behind the scenes. So it does look quite intimidating but it's really quite simple. The line breaks are set by the, the break tag um, and the bold is the strong um, but all you need to know is sometimes the, and it, if you have too many break tags you're going to have double spacing so you can remove that manually update and then you'll see the the break um, and the extra spacing removed so just bear that in mind the HTML code will help you sometimes if you've done something and it looks um, doesn't look right um, other things you might be using copy and paste um, time and dates you can enter automatically the uh, font sizes you can change within a certain range the indents the bullets we've already shown the, the justified uh, justification of your uh, text left or right alignment um, undo uh, you can even insert an image you wouldn't typically do this in your case decisions or letters but it is there just know that it uh, is available to you and you can explore the other icons um, at your leisure. Um, you might also use the, su the superscript and subscript functions. Once you are, are done, um, you just bear in mind that all case decisions and letters are by default unpublished, so you'll see the tick box is off, and um, it, t it captures a revision every time you make a new decision. Let's save this. Um, so this is going to be in draft mode and saved. So you'll notice a pink hue to the uh, the letter. So this is unpublished, and the fact that it's unpublished triggers this link um, just above the case decision. And that if I see it published, means it is unpublished at the moment. Now I can preview the P PDF by clicking on create, and depending on which heritage authority has been chosen under the Heritage Authority, this will change. So it might be SARA or um, Eastern Cape Pra or so on and so forth. 
Right, so this generates the preformatted PDF. Um, the signatures of the case officers at the top of the list are shown, and that's quite important to understand as well. So let's have a look at the order of the case officers. And the admin, you'll notice Bernadette, Lodine, Applicant, and Troy are listed um, in order. So Bernadette is the primary case officer right now. If I wanted Troy to come to the top of the list and have the PDF in Troy's name, then I would drag it to the top of the list under edit of the case. So Bernadette is the case officer now in Bernadette's profile. Um, she has um, Annie as her supervisor. So it automatically picks um, Annie's profile and Bernadette onto all her case decisions. If Annie generated this and was the primary case officer, Annie doesn't have a supervisor and there wouldn't be two signatures on the PDF. So then you can save the PDF if you're happy with it. So there's very little involved um, for a heritage officer. All you have to know is how to enter text into the discussion and decision section and uh, everything else is generated from the system, so the address of the applicant, the unique case ID, um, the case title, um, the official references and so on. And at the bottom the other references are also listed by default on all the correspondence, which is very useful. Um, in, quite important um, is the, um, the tracking of the order of the um, the two official references, or, or two or more official references. The uh, Sara, I think in this case, I just made this up for Sara, has been listed first, so if we look at the case, you'll see that's the order. So if we click on Edit, and move on to the Admin section, you'll see I can change that by dragging the, uh, this would be a typical Heritage Western Cape format, so let's drag that one to the top, and let's change the case officer to applicant demo, which doesn't have a signature under the profile. Um, and let's hit save, and you'll see the, the whole PDF change in a, in a second. So let's move on back to the decision, and we are going to uh, refresh. Probably it's too soon. Okay, right, there the case officer has changed now, and the case officer doesn't really have a proper profile filled out anyway with no signatures, it's just an applicant account. So that gives you the idea. Let's save this PDF. I'll, I already have saved it actually. So let's upload that to the case, so case decision, so let's edit. Go down to official docs, choose that file, and upload. Right, this helps your applicants to download that nice official looking decision um, with the, the, the PDF and the, the signatures. All the information is still really the same on the, um, the page anyway, um, but this, most people are, are after their official decision. So they can still read the decision um, without downloading the PDF, but um, please do remember to upload your official docs. Now, because it's in pink um, and not published, and we go back to the case, you'll notice a new block appear on the right-hand side, and that's the draft decisions and comments. And there are draft permits similarly linked to uh, the issued permits, so any permit that's not published for heritage officers, you can see it under draft permits. It's only when you publish it that it falls into the list with the other official decisions and comments. The members of the public and the applicant cannot see draft decisions and comments. Let's go back in there and let's uh, publish this um, and you'll see the pink color it disappears and the decision is now essentially official and let's go back to our case and you'll notice it's now in the, the list here and the, that's why it's so important to specify the type of correspondence you're generating so that the applicant isn't confused about where they are in the process because you have the types of correspondence have different types of statuses or, uh, or types essentially um, and the case itself is is going through a different uh, set of flags as you move along through the case as well. So the in combination this makes it very very clear to the to the applicant where they are in the case. 
Um, right, and if you made a mistake, you can click back on the letter um, and edit and unpublish the letter uh, or decision by simply going to the bottom, clicking on, un on the link to unpublish it and saving it. Okay, that, and that is pretty much it. So the, the act and all of those uh, flags are automatically included on your um, ROD. Um, let's republish it and uh, we also click on revisions and this is a s the same across all um, content types on SARS, heritage cases and objects and sites. You can compare the revisions for audit purposes so let's look at those two. Um, and this is like Microsoft Word track, change, track changes um, and you can see, uh, let's do the previous one, um, going to be particular changes there. Okay, right at the beginning we really created the um, the record and it's got these changes listed. Um, remember it's a revision history so when we created it the first time we actually entered most of this information in the first um, entry and so there aren't many changes. Let's edit the um, edit the case again. So uh, case decision. So let's um, take uh, To go to right, so let's edit <coughs> and let's change this whole line to that. Okay, and save. Right, this will generate a new revision. Let's compare that revision, this latest one, to the previous one. Right, there you can see we change that text to that text. It's great. So that's very nice for the auditors and for you to know what what just changed from one case officer to the next. Um, and uh, you know, no one has um, delete rights, so um, you know you know that you no one can remove your information um, without you without a track log. Right, let's end the, this chapter um, and then in the next chapter we'll create um, permits.